Now in this video, we are going to perform an experiment of general properties of matter in which we are going to determine the acceleration due to gravity with the use of a bar pendulum. In the last classes, you might have done this experiment, but uh, in that case, the pendulum was a simple pendulum in which you used a thread and a bob. But that is not an ideal pendulum. And that's why this time we are going to use a practical pendulum that is a bar pendulum to determine the acceleration due to gravity. So the experiment of bar pendulum basically uses two instruments only. One is the pendulum and this what you see is the bar pendulum. And this is the hanger of the bar pendulum. This one is the hanger of the bar pendulum. And second thing which we are going to use is just a stopwatch to find the time period of oscillation. So stopwatch I have already told you but if you want to see again I can show you how the stopwatch is. This is the stopwatch we will be using. This is the on off switch of the stopwatch. It is switched off with the help of this switch and switched on. Now this is the stopwatch. As you can see this is the hour, this one is the minutes and this is second and above this what you see is the fraction of the second. So this fraction of the second uh, can tell us about two decimal points after the, uh, after the second. That is it can measure 1 divided by 100th of a second. When we want to start the stopwatch, this is the key. When we want to stop, the same key stops it. And the next key is the reset key with the help of which we reset the stop clock. So this is the stop clock, a stopwatch we have already discussed. Now let us see clearly what is there in the bar pendulum. In the bar pendulum, I am bringing it near. Here you can see holes are there. This bar pendulum is basically a bar of metal with uniform mass distribution. Means at each and every length, the mass distribution is going to be the same. Now this bar pendulum is having so many holes. You can count it from any end. From this end, this one is the first hole, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth and tenth. This tenth hole is basically the center of gravity of this bar pendulum. Then the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th and 19th hole. So 19 holes are there. Uh, in one side of the center of gravity, 9 holes. In the other side of the center of gravity, there are 9 holes. Now to hang this bar pendulum on the hanger, bar pendulum hanger, there is an arrangement of a nut bolt. You can see it here. There is a knife edge. This knife edge can be tightened on the bar pendulum with the help of the two bolt, one at the, at the back and the second at the front. So when I want to fix it, I have to tight it. Whenever I want to remove it, for removal, I, I, I lose one side bolt. See one side bolt is not there. Now I can pull it out of the hole. Then if I want to place it in the second hole, I place it in the second hole and with the help of the nut, I tight it so that it, the knife edge is fixed on the bar pendulum. Now wh what about the hanger? Let us see the hanger of the bar pendulum and I am going to show you clearly how the hanger is. In this hanger, there is a slot here, this slot. From this slot, I can get the bar pendulum in and above here there is a metal surface but this surface here what you see is glass surface. So whenever I put the bar pendulum on the stand, I use this glass surface to put the bar pendulum on the stand. This glass surface is used, not the metal surface, not even the contact between this glass and the metal surface. So this is all about the hanger. Whenever I want to keep my bar pendulum 
on the hanger the process is i insert the bar pendulum from here rotate it and then i keep it on the glass surface so this is the way in which i can put the bar pendulum on the frame now to perform the experiment see what i am doing i am fixing this knife edge in the first hole from this end i am counting the number of hole so this one is the first hole in the first hole i have placed this knife knife edge and you can see this knife edge is not having a circular cross section instead it is having a sharper portion here this sharper portion should always be exactly in the downward direction so that the bar pendulum hangs or it is when it is put in the holder bar pendulum holder then this knife edge must be in contact with the glass slab it should be exactly in the downward direction means it is going to have it is going to point the vertical direction in the downward so in this way i have fixed this knife edge in the first hole and now i am going to perform the experiment basically what i have to do is i have to keep this bar pendulum on the stand i have to oscillate it and i have to take that time interval for different definite number of oscillations so i can take 20 oscillations 30 oscillations 40 oscillations but larger the oscillation the smaller will be the error in the measurement of time period so let me put this bar pendulum on the stand and i am going to take the time period for a definite number of oscillations so i have put the bar here you can see the bar pendulum is now kept on this uh, stand and now i have to take the reading now to take the time for definite number of oscillations i have to oscillate this bar pendulum and i oscillate it in such a way that end of the bar pendulum touches this mark you can see it is touching this mark this mark has been put because i want to know exact time of certain number of oscillations that's why this is the mark i will oscillate the bar pendulum so that it comes here from here itself when it touches i will start the stop clock and going this side when again it touches the mark one oscillation will be completed so that will be the way in which i am going to take the number of oscillations now you can see the pendulum is oscillating i have to start the clock exactly when the pendulum touches the mark and i am going to count 20 oscillations and after 20 oscillations i am going to see the time so let me start counting the oscillation 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 so this is the time taken for 20s oscillations and you can see the time interval is 31.87 seconds 31.87 seconds for 20 oscillations that this i have to i have to write in my observation table now what we are going to go going to do that we are going to see now i bring the wound this bar pendulum as you can see because i have taken the reading for the first hole now i have to change this knife edge to the second hole so i unscrew it i bring this knife edge out of the first hole and i insert it in the second hole in this way now first hole is open now second hole is having the knife edge i tight this knife edge exactly in the same way as i had done for the first hole the knife edge must be facing vertically downward direction and again 
I hang this bar pendulum on the stand of the bar pendulum. So this is the arrangement for the second reading. Now let us see how we are going to take the second reading. So we are going to count, uh, we are going to measure the time for the second hole. The stopwatch is ready as you can see. When the bar touches the mark, I am going to start it and I will count for 20 oscillations and then I am going to take the time interval for this. So let me start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So this is the time interval as you, as you can see. The time interval is uh, 31 seconds and fraction is 25. So it is 31.25 second for 20 oscillations in the second hole. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to change the position of knife hole to third hole, fourth hole, fifth hole, sixth hole, seventh, eighth and ninth. Up to ninth hole we are going to take the reading of the time interval for 20 oscillations. Now suppose after ninth hole if I put the knife edge in the 10th hole, this is the 2nd hole, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th hole. Suppose I put my, my, my knife edge in this 10th hole, let us see what happens. I am removing this and I am putting it in 10th hole. So this is 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th hole. So in 10th hole I am putting the the knife edge. This is the tenth hole, and I am fixing the knife edge in the tenth hole. And now I am going to put my bar pendulum on the stand, and I am going to see what happens to the oscillation of this bar pendulum. I have put this on the stand, and I try to get it oscillating. See what is happening. The bar pendulum is inclining in one direction and it is never going to come back. The oscillation is going to be stopped here. Means, what is the meaning that at this point the oscillation is going to have time period of infinite, infinity. So that is why we never take the reading in this tenth hole. What we are going to do is now we are going to move to the eleventh hole. And when we move to the 11th hole, then what we have to do that we are going to see. So this is the 11th hole. I am removing my knife edge from the 10th hole because in the 10th hole there was no oscillation. I am going to fix it on the 11th hole. But again, if I put in the 11th hole and I keep the direction of the bar pendulum same, then again I am going to face the same problem there will be no oscillation, instead the bar will be inclined in one direction, like this, see, it is not going to oscillate and that is why what we have to do is, we have to invert my bar pendulum in this way. This is the eleventh hole and I have inverted the bar pendulum and the knife edge is again going to face in the downward direction and then I am going to put my bar pendulum on the stand and find the time interval for 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th and so on holds. I am going to raise the, uh, the, the level, I am going to raise the level of this knife edge in the upward direction. Initially I was bringing in the downward direction, now it is going to go in the upward direction. So obviously the from center of gravity, the distance of the 11th hole is 5 cm, 12th hole will be the 10 cm. 13th will be having a distance of 50. Similarly, in the downward direction also, from the center of gravity, 
the first nearest hole is going to have a distance of 5 cm and the furthest hole is going to have a distance of 45 cm. So, with the distance from center of gravity, we are going to measure the distance and we in, for that specific distance, we are going to measure the time interval. So, in this process, we find the time interval for all the holes on the bar pendulum. Now, you see the readings taken in the case of bar pendulum. This is the column of serial number. This is hole number. Basically, this is hole number 1. And in hole number 1, the distance from center of gravity of this hole is 45 centimeter. I have taken 25 oscillations. And for 25 oscillations, the time was equal to 39.90 seconds. This 39.90 second divided by number of oscillations give me the time of single oscillation and that is known as the time period. So, this is whole number, distance from center of gravity, number of oscillation, time taken for the number of oscillation and this is the column for the time period. That is the time taken for single oscillation. In the second case, second hole I have taken, second hole is having a distance of 40 centimeter from center of gravity, again 25 oscillation. This time, the time interval reduces to 39.09 seconds and the time period becomes 1.564. Similarly, for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth hole, for the ninth hole, which is at a distance of 5 centimeter from the center of gravity, 25 oscillation, the time taken was 68.15 second and the time period become equal to 2.726. Now, what we do? Now, we move to the next hole. Next hole is the center of gravity. There I showed you there is no oscillation take place. So, the next hole which is ninth hole from the second, dis second end of the pendulum, the distance is 5 centimeter, 25 oscillations, the time taken was 64.78 seconds and the time period became 2.591. Now, I go on moving from this ninth hole to the 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd and 1. And for every one, for the 25 oscillations, I have taken the time period and calculated the, uh, sorry, taken the time interval for those oscillations and I have taken the time period of oscillations for all the 18 holes except one that is center of gravity. Now, just one thing I want you to take care of. See how the time period is changing. For the first hole, the time period was 1.59, second 1.56, third 1.52, fourth 1.519. So, this means from first hole to the fourth hole, the time period is decreasing continuously. But for the fifth hole, you can see that the time period has increased and it has become 1.527, then 1.578, then 1.698 means it is gradually increasing until I reach the ninth hole. Similarly, in the second side, for the ninth hole, the time period is 2.591, 1.92 reduced, 1.674 reduced, 1.577 reduced, 1.528 reduced, 1.527 reduced, then again 1.533 increased. 1.561 increased and 1.602 increased. So, it is not a linear variation, it is a cur curve variation and that curve I am going to show you just now. Now, to find as you know that the formula of time period is uh, 4 pi square multiplied by L divided by T. So, what we want to know is, we must know what is the value of L and what is the time period for that specific L. And to get that, we have plotted a curve between the distance from the center of gravity versus time period. So, in y axis you can see, I am plotting the time period, this is the time period. In the y axis time period, this is 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. 2.0, 2.1, 2.2. This is the time period in the y axis. 
and here you can see this is the center of gravity zero mark and this is the distance of 5 cm 10 cm 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 and 50 in one side in the second side again 5 10 15 20 25 30 and so on now when when we plot the curve what we see when the distance is very less that is for 5 cm mark we are getting this point then this point the time period is decreasing it has decreased and then again it started increasing Similarly, in the second side, the point which is very near to the uh, center of gravity, for that we are getting point here, for the next year, next year means time period is decreasing and ultimately it starts increasing. Now, we draw a freehand curve joining these points. It is possible that any one of the point may be left out, but you have to draw a freehand curve. So this is the freehand curve drawn. Now I want to find L. That is L means the separation between point of suspension and point of oscillation. Point of suspension and point of oscillation. So for that what I have done is I have drawn a line parallel to the x-axis. When I draw it parallel to the x-axis, this line is going to intersect the graph at four different points. Point number one, point number two, point number three, and point number four. Now, if this point is taken as the point of suspension, then after center of gravity, this is point of oscillation. If this is considered to be point of suspension, this is going to be the point of oscillation. So, the distance between this point and the next point after the center of gravity, this is going to be the length L1. Similarly, if this is point of suspension and this is point of oscillation, then the distance between these two is going to be L2. We get the mean of L1 and L2 to get the length of the uh, pendulum, pendulum, effective length of the pendulum. So, this distance is approximately from here to here, it is 65.5 centimeter. From this point to this point, the separation is 64. So, I have taken 65.5 plus 64 divided by 2, that is mean of L1 and L2, it comes to be equal to 64.75. So, in this way, we get the value of L. What about T? Obviously, this parallel line is going to intersect the time axis that is y axis at certain point. Here in this specific case, it is intersecting the y axis at the point of 1.6 centimeter and that is why the time period becomes equal to 1.6 centimeter, uh, sorry 1.6 second. So, L is the length of the pendulum is 64.75. The time of oscillation of the pendulum is 1.6 second. So, knowing L and the value of T, we can easily calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity. So, let us see the calculation part of this experiment. So, this is the calculation part. The formula is G that is acceleration due to gravity is equal to 4 pi square which is a constant multiplied by L that is length of the pendulum divided by t square that is square of the time period of oscillation. So, in this case as I have told you that I have taken L is equal to L1 plus L2 upon 2 and that becomes equal to 64.75. The time period as I have shown you on the graph it is equal to 1.6 second. That is why putting the value G becomes equal to 4 multiplied by 3.14 square multiplied by 64.75 divided by 1.6 square. The numerator becomes equal to 2553.64 divided by 2.56. When divided by 2.56, it comes to be equal to 997.51. So, the acceleration due to gravity as observed by the experiment of bar pendulum is equal to 997.51, which is near to its actual value that is 981 centimeter per second square. So, this is the result obtained and I have given the unit also that is centimeter per square second. So, this is the completion of our calculation part and hence 
we have completed or we have obtained the objective of this experiment that is we wanted to determine the acceleration due to gravity by the help of bar pendulum. So that is all in this experiment.